Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and this is the Acer Aspire Cloudbook 11. It's a thin, light, and inexpensive notebook that has a starting price of $169, measures just uh, about 0 0.7 inches thick, and weighs around 2.5 pounds. Now, that $169 model only has 16 gigabytes of storage, and for a Windows 10 laptop, which is what this is, it's not really a lot of space for anything other than the operating system. So I'd recommend spending a little bit more money, and for $189 and up, you can get a model that has... Uh, two gigabytes of RAM, 32 gigabytes of storage, which still doesn't give you a ton of space, but gives you a little bit of space for apps and files. Um, and then it also comes with Office 365, a one-year subscription to Microsoft's Office software and cloud storage. The device has HDMI full-size, USB 3.0, a headset jack, SD card slot, and power. And in terms of that power uh, cable, it has a sort of laptop size, a small laptop size power brick here. Uh, I've seen bigger, I've seen smaller. On the other side, we've got a USB 2.0 port, so it's got a total of two USB ports, one of which is USB 3.0. So it's nice to see that even inexpensive laptops that sell for under $200 these days are coming with at least one USB 3.0 port for higher speed uh, uh, USB data connections. It also has 802.11ac and Wi-Fi. Now on the bottom, you'll notice that there's speaker uh, grills near the front, and that's about it for the bottom. There's, uh, there's no other ports. It does have an Intel Celeron N3050 dual core Broswell processor. It's a six watt chip, doesn't generate a ton of heat, and so it's a fanless system that generates pretty much no noise either. Uh, you could open up the bottom of the case, and you can find a picture of that at lilliputing.com by removing these screws, and then you have to sort of take out these feet and get more screws. But once you do that, you'll notice that while the battery can be taken out, it's not really designed for it, but it can be, uh, and the uh, wireless card can be replaced, there's no really easy way to get at the memory and storage. So if you wanted to upgrade those things, y y you can't. Uh, so it's a small, cheap notebook, and it's sort of what you see is what you get. Now, the design I, I kind of like, especially for a low-cost device. It's got a textured finish here. Uh, doesn't really show fingerprint smudges. And when you open it up, it's got a matte 11.6 inch, 1368 by, or 1366 by 768 pixel display. Uh, it doesn't have great viewing angles, and the colors can be a little bit more muted on matte displays than on dis uh, glossy screens, but it does mean that it's going to be a little bit easier to use in a window. It doesn't reflect a lot of glare. The keyboard and touchpad are actually pretty nice. It's a little bit smaller. Some of the keys are a little bit smaller than a full-size keyboard, but I like that unlike some Acer models where there's a lot of keys cramped in together here, the page up, page home, uh, uh, page up, page down, home and end buttons, and the arrow keys here are fairly easy to detect with your fingertips, and the uh, volume buttons are up here by the mute button. I've seen other Acer laptops that sort of cram them all into the space down here, which can be awkward. Touchpad is nice and wide and uh, supports uh, multi-touch gestures, including two fingers to tap and scroll. And while we've got a rough textured plastic here around the edges, this is smooth. So it's not a glass touchpad, but it feels almost as if it were. So uh, because it has flash storage, it boots relatively quickly for a computer with a low power processor, and it can feel at times when you're launching applications or just doing a cold boot like this a little bit faster and more responsive than something like the Acer Aspire R11, which I reviewed recently, and which has a hard drive. And even though it has a faster processor, it takes much longer time to boot. I'm just gonna go ahead and enter my password here. Yeah, it's taking a moment to get there. Okay, here we go. So again, you can see that the uh, screen looks okay from side to side. It looks a little funky when you tilt it back too far. And that's something that I don't really have a huge problem with on laptops. It can be much more problematic on uh, tablets or two-in-one systems because with a laptop, you just sort of position it so that it's easy for you to see, and then you start using it. Now, as I mentioned, it has a, a Celeron N3050 Braswell processor. It's a dual core chip. It's a low power processor that's sort of the replacement to the Celeron and Pentium Bay Trail chips that we saw in 2013 and 2014. And performance per watt should be a tiny bit better, but it's a low wattage processor and it has relatively low clock speed. So I found that in day-to-day -day tasks, uh, systems like the Asus eBook X205TA with an Intel Bay Trail quad-core uh, Atom processor actually performs faster. And you can find benchmark results and 
uh, other things at lilliputing.com. This one will do a little bit better in graphics benchmarks, but it's not really a gaming machine. So, so what can we do with it? Let's go ahead and uh, fire up some applications here. I found that the Microsoft Edge browser tends to work a little bit better than Chrome. I think that might be because it doesn't support extensions right now. Um, but let's go ahead and load a web page. While it's doing this, I'm going to open the task manager here in the background. And you can see that even just loading a web page, we're at 100% CPU usage. Uh, after a moment, that should sort of die down. Or maybe it won't. So uh, it does take a lot of resources to do, not a lot of work. So we've got one web page open. Let's go ahead and open up a second one. And let's play a video. So this is a slow motion video. It's not, uh, not like the computer is having a hard time rendering it or anything. Um, and you can see again here that the display looks pretty good when viewed directly, but if you tilt it back, it can be kind of hard to see what's happening. Let's go ahead and stop that and close that window. In fact, let's close all the windows and see if we can get the CPU to go back down. So that's just using the Edge web browser. Now, I tend to work in Google Chrome, and it's a multi-process, multi-threaded application, and I find that uh, if I'm just running one browser tab at a time, okay, we finally got down here to 5%, 9%. If I'm running just one browser tab at a time, it works okay. If I try to open up three, four, five, six tabs, which I normally like to do, uh, it can grind to a halt pretty quickly. Leaving some of those tabs backgrounded, not a huge problem, but switching back and forth between tabs or opening multiple web pages at once sort of makes this computer grind to a halt. So if you use it for one thing at a time, I think it's fine. If you wanted to sort of take advantage of the, the multi-threaded, multi-tasking capabilities, you might run into a little bit of difficulty. Um, that said, unlike some of the other laptops in this price range, which are largely Chromebooks, you can run any Windows application. You can run Microsoft Office, LibreOffice, GIMP, Photoshop, uh, anything that you like. And then, of course, it does support Windows Store applications as well. So uh, let's go ahead and scroll down here and fire up the official Netflix app. Now, of course, you could use Netflix on a Chromebook too using a web browser. I just wanted to show this an as an example of a Windows Store application. So, you know, it does support all sorts of different applications, native applications, Win32 applications, window, universal Windows applications. Um, but I think in some cases, a Chromebook might be a better choice if you want something that actually feels a little bit zippier. It's not going to bog down as much because it's really just designed to run one application, which is the web browser. Uh, some people don't think that that makes sense. I think that Chromebooks can fit an interesting uh, niche because there's lots of web applications for editing documents, uh, communications, all sorts of other activities. But if you really have some Windows apps that you need to be able to run, this can do it. It just might not do it uh, in a super speedy fashion. So that's a look at some of what you can do with the Acer Aspire 1 Chrome, uh, Cloudbook 11. There's also a 14-inch model, which uh, sells for a little bit more money, has uh, slightly more powerful specs. Um, the, uh, you can find more details, including benchmark results, uh, disk speed results, and other things at lilliputing.com but uh, I just wanted to give you a quick overview of how this works. And again, if I'm just sort of running one app at a time, not a problem. It's, uh, it's kind of hard to make it get too sluggish on demand, but let's see if I can do that real quick here just to give you a better idea of what I'm talking about. Let's go ahead and open a web page. Let's open a second web page. Open a third one, and and so here we are. Even though we've got a relatively fast internet connection, it's taking a pretty long time to just load some of these web pages. It's not quite as bad as I was hoping I could show you, but. Uh, Yeah, 
Again, if we open the task manager and take a look, you'll see that uh, performance is using 84% of the RAM, CPU consumption is peaking at 100%, and here we go, we've got a website that is still just not loading, even though we've got a fast connection. Now it's finally loaded, and I think that might be because it's in the foreground. Let's see what's happening here. Nothing. So performance can be a little bit iffy depending on uh, how much you're asking the computer to do at once. When you're just doing sort of one thing at a time, it's not so bad. So let's close some of these. Just sort of go full screen here and even close that tab in the background. And now it seems to sort of behave okay. So, not the fastest computer, not the slowest either, but definitely an inexpensive choice. The only real question is whether it's a better choice than some of the other sub $200 laptops we've seen in recent years, and I think it depends on what you're looking for. Uh, it does have that USB 3.0 port, it does have a nice touchpad and keyboard, and it does have 802.11ac Wi-Fi, but if you're really looking for better uh, single-threaded or multitasking performance, I think something like the ASUS eBook X205 TA still offers slightly better performance. I'll be curious to see sort of uh, over uh, the rest of 2015 and 2016, what other devices in this price range we start to see, because I, I like wherever this is going. <laughs> I like the idea of low cost portable machines that get long battery life. This guy runs for about seven hours out in the charge. It's not stellar, but it's pretty good. Um, and it sells for under $200. So there's not really a lot to complain about. I'm mostly just nitpicking here. Um, if you were expecting miracles from a $189 computer, then well, I don't know what to tell you. The miracles uh, don't come at that price range. Uh, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing.